What's up, people? It's your gay. <laughs> yes, Canada was amazing, and I'll tell you guys about that some other time. However, so much has happened while we were gone. First of all, Uncle Saraki leaves the Senate. Ah, my father. Very sorry, very, very sorry. Ah, you you have done well. You have done well. In case you are watching me, Egmo, don't mind the enemies of progress, so Jari. Now, as the man was leaving the Senate, you know, he donated his severance allowance, 7.5 million naira, that is about $20,000, to be shared by the families of victims of Boko Haram. That is the family of Leah, the girl that was abducted by Boko Haram. She's still in Boko Haram custody, as well as the families of Ahmed Khoisan and Hawa Liman, these were two humanitarian workers abducted and killed by Boko Haram, as well as the children of the late member of the 8th Senate. Of course, some Nigerians have been saying, ah, how much is it? 7.5 million naira compared to how much Uncle Saraki stole, I mean, uh, how much Uncle Saraki made. I think it's just hard to please Nigerians. I want to say to God be the glory, great is he had done. Uh, why are you? What must you? Sorry, my people. That was uh, Uncle Dino Melaye saying goodbye to Uncle Saraki. You know, <laughs> you know he had to sing a special number. It was a very long something. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, Uncle Ahmed Lawan is now the new Senate president. Essa, you know, do, <laughs> we are watching you. Our eyes are watching you very closely. We are watching you on Plasma TV. And Omar Gege is now the deputy Senate president. That was the senator who stole the maze on the floor last year. Remember? <laughs> These are the people running the country. We have suffered. <laughs> we have suffered. Anyway, and the speaker is now Uncle Femi Bajabia Mila. The man used to be a lawyer in America where he allegedly misappropriated $25,000 belonging to a client in Georgia. <laughs> So he relocated to Nigeria, joined politics, and he is now the Speaker of the Senate. Now there's still a bit of a dark cloud hanging over, you know, the time that you worked as a lawyer in America because you were sanctioned for misconduct. Yeah. In effect, $25,000 went yeah. missing and you were accused of stealing it. That video was from 2015 or 2014, I don't remember. But when they asked him about what happened in America, he said that it wasn't really him, that it was the fault of a Nigerian man that was working for him at the time and that he doesn't even know where to find this Nigerian man. And I had a prior legal uh, undocumented alien, unfortunately Nigerian, who was working with me to get money out and pass them on to different clients, and which he did, except for that one client. Um, and, the, and the guy had um, disappeared into thin air. <laughs> He also said that he has cleared his name, by the way, in America. So, as it is now, all these people are Buhari people, you know, the Senate President, the, the Deputy Senate President, which is not the best because there won't be checks and balances. Good thing is that Uncle Jumelaya is still there. We thank God for that. At the same time, this means that they can no longer give us excuses as to why something is not being done because they are now all on Buhari's side. Hey, you understand? Now that you have all the people that are on your side, let's see what they will do. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord, let the heart hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, Uncle Dino. I mean, he's still singing his farewell song for Buddha Bukola. I mean, it's a very long something. <laughs> And then he had a long episode, you can watch it on YouTube. Meanwhile, I'm really sure that you guys have heard about the newly discovered Abacha loot that is 211 million pounds, uh, 267 million dollars or 96 billion naira. Now the British court wants to seize this money. I mean, do we have a government in Nigeria? That is what I don't understand. Can they just seize other countries' money like that? As in, they are, they are going to use this money to develop their prison in Jersey Island. Because you know, any money that they've seized in the past they always put it in what they call the criminal confiscation fund and they use that to build new police stations and develop their prisons so that is where they're going i mean we can definitely use a lot of improvements in our prisons in nigeria have you guys seen Kirikiri prison i mean why can't the nigerian government fight to get this money i don't understand they need to fight to get this money i don't understand what they are doing uh the other thing is i'm really confused because the minister of information that is a bami or galai said that the previously recovered abacha loot in 
case you are wondering what they've been doing with the money he said that that is what they are using to fund the social investment programs you know that is a trader money for business owners the five thousand naira that they are giving to the less privileged as well as the empower initiative the homegrown school feeding program now that is the same 500 billion naira that the first lady recently Aisha Bwari, said that um it has not reached many places including her village <laughs> I mean, they should let us know how this money is being spent too. Because as much as we want them to get this Abacha loot, the new one, the 93 billion naira, they also need to be more transparent on how they are spending the money. By the way, it's not only Abacha that stole money, as you guys know. There are so many former heads of states, former presidents, some of them still alive, who embezzled money. Benny, why are we not talking about those people? So let me know what you guys think about the UK court trying to seize this 93 billion naira. And let me know what you think about the new leaders of the Senate. You guys not know much guess what i'm just keeping it real moving on to sudan barely two months ago we were all celebrating that the military joined protesters to force former al-bashar to step down after 30 years in power well because people continue to protest asking the military to hand over power to a civilian government to allow a democratic government the military has now turned on the people killing more than 100 protesters and also injuring more than 500 people they are throwing bodies of people into the nile river they blocked social media in sudan so that people outside of Sudan will not know what's happening in Sudan. They also blocked phone transmission as well as the internet in general. They've also revoked the licenses of so many foreign journalists, including Al Jazeera journalists, and they raided all their offices so that they will not report about what's happening in Sudan. People are literally being killed on the street. And guess what? They're playing music on TV as if nothing is happening. People dying on the street, hundreds missing and injured, but they still show music on TV business as usual. And this is exactly what used to happen during Bashir. They made sure that the media is not talking about it. These military members were hugging civilians after the coup. They promised to hand over power. So, is it a coincidence, by the way, that the crackdown on civilians started soon after the military transitional leaders visited Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE? You know, when they visited Saudi Arabia, Saudi gave the military transitional leaders $3 billion. Ten days after al-Bashir was deposed, the Saudi and Emirati governments sent Sudan $3 billion worth of aid. Billion dollars? For what? Don't forget that since the Arab uprising of 2011, there have been several reports that Saudi Arabia and the UAE have promoted authoritarian governments run by military strongmen in so many countries. They allegedly do not want democracy in that region, uh, the whole Arab Spring. There was an uprising in Bahrain, not far from Qatar. You know that they crushed that one. They also allegedly bankrolled a return to military dictatorship in Egypt. And speaking of Egypt, the Sudan military transitional government also visited the president of Egypt, El Sisi, who came in through a coup. Don't forget that he also came in through a coup. Mm -hmm. And he's now the chairman of AU, African Union. <laughs> so earlier, the man said that the military in Sudan should hand over power within 15 days. Now he has changed it to three months. I mean, it's not a surprise that after collecting $3 billion that the military leaders would revoke Al Jazeera's license. That one did not surprise me because, you know, Al Jazeera is owned by Qatar. And Qatar and Saudi Arabia, they are not in agreement. So let me know what you guys think about Saudi, Egypt, the UAE and what's happening in Sudan. Do you think they have anything to do with what's happening in Sudan or not? You know, I sort of suspected this when the military in Sudan said that they will need about two years to transition to civilian government. I was like, ah. I mean, it baffles me to see that African soldiers would take money from other countries and basically kill their own fellow citizens. I mean, that's like selling out your own people. And it, that just, it breaks my heart. Anyway, this is just really heartbreaking. I I don't know how to express my condolences to the people of Sudan, all of them that have lost loved ones during this protest. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So moving on to Liberia, well, we were all so excited when former footballer George Weir became president. We said, ah, this is a younger president. He's 52 now. So we said, ah, he should do well. However, there's mixed reactions right now on the streets of Liberia. Some people are saying that he's doing really well. Among other things, he has constructed some roads. Some of them he has started, but they are not done. He has renovated a secondary school. He's building 635 housing units for low-income earners, although 500 of that would be in his hometown. <laughs> 
<laughs> he sent 15 medical students abroad and he made all public schools free among other things some people also like him because he opened his own church where he preached the inaugural sermon this that believe continue to worship this is what we have to be we say to God be the glory However, some people in Liberia are saying that he's not doing well at all. Trouble started when he refused to declare his assets. You know, after about six months of people shouting, that was when he said that he declared his asset, but it's still not made public. Me, I'm thinking if you have nothing to hide, why not declare and make your asset public? Like, you are a public official. Second of all, three months into his presidency, one of his properties was demolished and it's now being replaced and transformed. Also, his personal resorts is being renovated and he has proceeded to building an estate comprising of 47 units for himself. Last week, pictures of the estate surfaced and Liberians were really amazed by how quickly his personal projects are moving forward compared to the people's projects. For example, he promised to build a military hospital and work has started on that hospital, but it's not moving as fast as that of his estate. Now, in the middle of all this, during the dedication of a market last week, he threatened anybody that dares to insult or criticize his government. <laughs> Those are constantly insulting the president. There will be no citizen in this country. And I can defy you. That will ever insult the president and think you will walk in the street today. But any insult and any threat, that citizen will be buried under the law. I cannot believe this. And because people wanted to protest, he shut down social media and of course the internet in Liberia. All social media sites were later blocked in attempts to put an end to the spread of the protests. Netblocks said WhatsApp, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Google's Gmail service and the Associated Press were among the sites blocked. In any case, people went out to protest the state of the economy as well as the rising inflation, which is now 23%. Anger and frustration on the streets of Monrovia as thousands massed on Capitol Hill to denounce rising prices in the country. Protesters say life in Liberia has become increasingly difficult. Inflation is now at an all-time high in the country, reaching 23.3% in April. Okay, so I want to know what you guys think about what's happening in Liberia because I don't understand anymore. Even if it's doing well in other areas, is it morally right for a president not to declare his assets and then be working on personal projects? As in, it's not even 18 months since he was sworn in. And in the middle of that, for him to now say that anybody that criticizes him and his administration will be dealt with. And you know, if you're from Liberia, I really would like to hear from you about his performance so far. I know that some people love him, some people right now, they don't really care about him. I like to hear from both sides. Anyway, you guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. What's up? It's your girl, Adiola. Welcome to Wave, the easy way of sending money home. You guys are seriously a few steps away from fast, reliable, and no fee money transfer. Now to complete setting up your Wave account, Grab your cell phone and open the Wave app and then follow the instructions below. Now don't forget to use my name as promo code Adiola if you want to get $5 extra when you sign up for the first time. That's what's up. <laughs> Alright y'all, it's been real and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please be sure that you do that. Until next time, I'm going to see you all later. Peace out.